hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy respiratory depression leads to decreased blood going to the brain and hence this can have uh, sequelae which differ in preterm neonates and term neonates or the anatomical sites which are involved differ in preterm neonates and term neonates in preterm neonates you get periventricular white matter which is affected whereas in term neonates you get the subcortical gray and white matter where you have profound ischemia the deep basal ganglia the thalami and the brain stem are involved in both preterm and term neonates so again absence of cerebral autoregulatory mechanisms in preterm neonates leads to damage to the white matter oligodendroglia which are very vulnerable to ischemia clinically can produce seizures hypotonia apnea and bradycardia milder injury the abnormal periventricular ecogenic re lesions resolve whereas in severe injury these can progress to cavitation and this then is seen as periventricular leukomalacia so this is a 29 weeks neonate who had a weak cry on the first scan there are bilaterally symmetrical increased ecogenicities look at the ecogenicities they are as ecogenic as the choroid plexus so increased ecogenicity bilaterally symmetrical lesions in the periventricular white matter a follow up ultrasound done after 2 weeks shows cavitation there which is cystic periventricular leukomalacia which of course has a bad prognosis this was confirmed on a mri done this is a case of profound hypoxia wherein the deep gray nuclei can be seen involved they look much more ecogenic than normal as seen on the image on the right side so in prognosis you you can have intellectual motor and visual deficits spastic diplegia as the lower limb uh, lower extremity axons lie closer to the lateral ventricles which can be obviously involved more severe ischemia and cystic changes you can get spastic quadriplegia visual abnormalities result when the peritrigonal regions that is the optic radiations and visual association pathways are affected in term infants ischemic lesions involve the cortical gray matter and subcortical white matter in mild forms you get cerebral edema where the ventricles are effaced or slit like and increased ecogenicity is seen in the cortical gray matter this can also progress to cystic changes many times germinal matrix grade 1 hemorrhages resolve and they leave a tiny cystic area which are subependymal cysts which are very commonly picked up in your ultrasounds <laughs>